Our, our first speaker is Dr. Alia Dapuri. That bunch of first year right now. Woo! Woo! First year! Um, so, again, thank you, Dr. Ali, for getting us a space because it's midterms going on. And um, she's going to be talking about the Little Mosque of the Prairie. This is my first time coming into the podium, but I'm very familiar with all of you and I have the magic key to come off the table. <laughs> Uh, so thank you for United Nations Canada uh, Multiculturalism and Multimedia uh, project to invite me to speak. I will be speaking passionately about one of my favorite topics, about media and representation of ethnicity uh, in Canada, about some representation of Muslims in Canadian multiculturalism. I have to say that I have published a couple of uh, academic pieces about this. Uh, one of them I have a copy of which uh, and it will be available. If someone would be interested to have a copy, I would be more than happy to give one. Also, I am uh, working on a forthcoming book chapter in a book on zoology uh, written by Professor Yasmin Zain from the University of Waterloo. Uh, and it will be published by University of British Columbia Press, hopefully by the end of this year, about Little Mosque on the Perry, uh, reimagination of Muslims in Canada. So, Little Mosque on the Prairie has been premiered in CBC in fall 2007, and just out of entertainment, I will show you the first clip and the first absolutely uh, trailer of this one. It's really worth watching, okay? So, as you have seen, two absolutely different models of media representation of Muslim. The first one is totally with a Canadian flavor, multiculturalism. CBC Little Mosque on the Prairie, while the second one is Aliens America. Thank you a lot for those people who adopt me, who will get to uh, accommodate me for one year exchange. Um, what CBC achieved, um, well, I can talk about this academically for a long, long time, but uh, to just name a few, CBC has two main progressive contributions according to my own humble perspective. Uh, to uh, achieve a positive Muslim representation in media. The first one is reconstructing the Muslim imaginary in Canada. And the second one is to shift this idea of 1001 exotic night uh, about tales, stereotypes of Muslim to simply shape Muslims as an integral part of a Canadian multiculturalism. Uh, Zaka Nawaz, who is the, uh, the um, uh, CBC Oops, yeah, CBC, this is Musa Kanawas, the uh, uh, um, writer of uh, Little Mosque on the Prairie. She has written in 2005 uh, a documentary published in, uh, through the National Film Board, 2005, Me and My Mosque, uh, talking about Muslim women in North America struggling to find their own space, and finally they find to have a mosque and talk about the many challenges for female uh, Muslim in North America, not only in Canada. It's a very progressive, uh, again, attempt. Um, I just want to share with you some of the very cool feedback of uh, CBC Little Mosque, not only in terms of media representation, but also popular culture and even, you know, fashion. This is one uh, of the blogs that I found, and I have presented this in Women World Conference in summer, and it's talking about hijab chic. And um, um, this is hijab chic dressed like Rayan. Rayan is the actor in uh, CBC Little Mosque. She was a progressive Muslim uh, working as a doctor physician. And um, yeah, so this is some example of the character in Little Mosque on the Prairie. So how much um, tides CBC Little Mosque has created, not only in Canada, but in North America and also in Europe. In Europe, they have been, they have dropped uh, some of the box office hits to get CBC Little Mosque. And in France, they have translated with a subtitle, La Petite Mosquée dans la Prairie, to have a version of, of Little Mosque. And many European 
uh, immigrants and audience in Europe, they were arguing why we, we, should, we should have a, another version of Little Mosque on the Prairie with a European flavor in Europe. Why Canada are so progressive of having uh, to show Muslim in their own uh, prime time CBC, which is a public broadcast and not us in, in Europe. So that is for me taking from our uh, telling our own story, the theme of, of tonight. This is for me something that is very important and I know I'm talking very positively, but I think this is something that we should be very proud of. Um, my final slide, it is one um, one article from the Canadian Multiculturalism Act 1985 where it stated that the, the, the government of Canada recognizes and promotes the understanding that multiculturalism reflects culture and racial diversity of Canadian society and acknowledges the freedom of all members of Canadian society to preserve, enhance, and share the cultural heritage. And I think that CBC Little Mosque has achieved this kind of not only preserving and enhancing, but sharing the, 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 the aspect of culture and values and so on within our, our uh, media mainstream. Okay, Shelby, to you. To Simi. Simi. So we're gonna have a bit of a discussion with me too about sort of packing a bit of what you presented. You're also a big fan of the show. Yes. You're a bit biased. Um, the first one is, uh, is yet again, um, a very positive model of media representation. I'm also talking about media, mainstream media and alternative media. And uh, what is so positive about the first clip, it is the first attempt, is that it is for the first time shown on mainstream media that it is a prime time taxpayer are paying for the CBC. So for me, that is something very positive. And for the second one, it is not um, I would say uh, tempting enough for the audience. So the audience have dropped this for the, for the first season. It was not even offered again. Uh, for, the sec for the first one, CBC Little Mosque, it was offered four, four times. So are, we are now in fourth season of CBC Little Mosque. That is something reflecting more of the success of this, um, of this sitcom to represent positively and progressively one segment of uh, of um, the Canadian multicultural tissue, which is Muslim, tend to be always stereotyped as extremist, terrorist, and you name it. The women are always wearing niqab, fighting, or uh, you know, dominated by male, and so on. But for for the very first time, you have seen a progressive Muslim like Ryan, the character who is doctor, physician, successful. Uh, talking about even controversial topics like dating in Islam, you know, having this fasting all day and, and so on. So that is for me very different from the Alien in America, even with the title of it, Alien in America. It, it, it is implying more of an outsider point of view, but since the Mosque, it is following the tale of, you know, uh, Little Mosque, Little House of the Prey, you know, it's, it's a hit during its time. So for me, that is the main. Um, basically difference. Um, I think another really interesting thing to point out is uh, Zaka Nawaz, obviously a Muslim woman herself, she's also providing a platform for communities need to be free to laugh at itself, which I think is really important, particularly given um, many of the events that have happened over the last decade. Can you comment to that? Zakana was, as uh, I have um, uh, studied some of her work, she said that some non Muslims are always asking her, Are Muslims allowed to laugh? And that is hilarious that some, that you know, at, at that extent, images and stereotypes uh, are associated with Muslims, that they are not even allowed to laugh, which is crazy. Everyone is, is allowed to laugh. So human nature is. is uh, uh, or laughing is a human nature. So that is something that Dr. has effectively uh, done during this sitcom uh, by making, by normalizing, by naturalizing the other and make you laugh about yourself. It's okay to have corner gas, for example, at CTV, and you laugh at yourself as, a, as like an almost a Canadian. But at this time, at CBC, you, you start to see most of these extremist or traditional or progressive, and you start laughing at. So I think that Zarkanaz has, has uh, 
has been very successful in doing so, even if, I would have to say, even if there are some implied stereotype in, even in in the mosque. For example, uh, with the whole tale of Yaleli, uh, Ya uh, Habibi, and so on, it's like, oh, that is more of 1001 night steel, belly dancing, drums setting, and, and so on. You have seen also in the in the um, in the clip where the imam is uh, is captured in the airport where the uh, where they, they start to say it is a lot planned for me it is it's as if you're, I'm dropping I'm dropping the bomb on them so even the terminologies they are shown inside the dialogue within the dialogue but it is in a funny way that you can laugh at and it's okay to laugh at yourself so I think that is again a um, very progressive attempt that. The Arcanalas indeed have, uh, have done it through this sitcom. Very much so, and she does create sort of, she sort of bridges that gap as well by creating a space where everybody can look at something a little more effectively. Uh, Dr. Alia, thank you so much for, um, for bringing these clips and for bringing your insights to us this evening. And um, we're going to open, we're going to have one more speaker up um, in this first half, um, and then we're going to open the floor up for some questions. So if you could hold your questions for another 10 or 15 minutes, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you.